Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a little place called Higher Bockhampton in Dorset or to be precise very close to Thomas Hardy's birthplace and it's located about three miles east of Dorchester and we're going to be walking a roughly six mile circular route that well effectively is a cradle to grave homage to the famous novelist and poet Thomas Hardy. We'll be starting at his birthplace, strolling through Puddletown Forest and the Heath, along the banks of the River Froome and into the churchyard at Stinsford where uh, Hardy's heart is buried. And I expect there'll be lots to see along the way. Now I'm filming in the middle of June, the sun is out, a little bit of cloud about which hopefully will cool things down a little bit. We've had a lot of hot weather recently but should be perfect conditions for a walk to join us. Well we're going to start our walk at uh, Thomas Hardy's birthplace and I've parked my car at a car park at the visitor centre here. Uh, there is a charge even for National Trust members I'm afraid. The visitor centre is about 600 yards to the west of uh, Hardy's cottage. So we'll start off with a, a little look at the cottage first. Well in front of me there is Hardy's cottage and this is about as near as we're going to be able to get to it because we're not going to be visiting it today. Indeed dogs aren't allowed. But as you can see it's a small cob thatched building and Thomas Hardy was born here on the 2nd of June 1840. His dad was a stonemason or builder and uh, his mum was well educated. Indeed uh, his mum taught him uh, right up to the age of eight. The house was built by his great grandfather in 1800 and he lived here until his 30s and indeed it was here that he wrote many of his early works including Far From the Madding Crowd in 1874. It's now owned by the National Trust and is a museum. I think the bedroom is set up as Hardy had it with his writing table. Well, a couple of interesting things to look at uh, right by uh, Hardy's cottage. Uh, well, first see this rather magnificent uh, monument to uh, Thomas Hardy himself. And then just to the side, there's a little uh, footpath sign, as you can see. The Hardy Way starts here and that's that 220 mile long distance path that winds through Dorset linking places that have connections with Hardy finishing up at Stinsford Churchyard where his heart is buried and hopefully we'll see that later on in the walk. Thankfully our walk today takes us uh, up to the churchyard so we don't have to detour 220 miles. Now heading southwards for a lovely uh, area of uh, mixture of heath and woodland. So I've got Puddletown Forest on my left, which is huge, and then on my right is uh, Thorncon Wood, which I think is a, a nature reserve of about 26 hectares or so. Well, this rather enchanting pond is called Rushy Pond, and Thomas Hardy did a poem about. Uh, the pond here and mentioned it in his short story The Withered Arm. Oh I'm all excited. <laughs> Regular viewers will know that I struggle sometimes to find boundary stones particularly in Dorset but I think today I've been successful. Certainly on an ordnance survey map there's a boundary stone around these parts and I am pretty sure that it's just behind me here. I mean I might be talking absolute rubbish and I might be looking in the wrong place but uh, well I'm going to claim it anyway. It's a nice stone isn't it? I've just come out of uh, Thorncon Wood and now on the Duddle Heath Nature Reserve and well there's some fantastic views up here which I'll show you shortly but there's a handy little information board behind me because I'm just about to cross a Roman road 
I'll um, put some photographs up of the information board. You can freeze the screen if you want to know a little bit more information. But uh, basically it was part of the road that ran from Dorchester up to uh, old um, Sarum near Salisbury. And certainly if I just uh, slowly uh, move forward, try and keep the sun out of the, uh, the screen. But you can see behind me definitely all the hallmarks of a dead straight Roman road. Now we're going to do a little detour actually because I want to show you something called the rain barrows. Well as we're making our way along the Roman road there's some quite stunning views to the south. Very much a mixture of um, forest, looks mainly pine as far as I can see. A little bit of deciduous there uh, and also some heathland as well. And um, we will eventually be heading in uh, that direction after our little detour. Goodness gracious me, will you look at the size of that ant's nest? It's got to be, what, a metre and a half tall? I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on the, the GoPro, but they are busy beavering away. I'm guessing these are the southern wood ants, huge, great big black things. Well, that's certainly one of the biggest nests that I've seen. Now, I think this is one of the, uh, the rain barrows, an old uh, uh, Bronze Age uh, bowl barrow. And if I'm right, there should be another couple just further along. Ah, here we go. This is the second of the bowl barrows. I say there are three bowl barrows here. They, they range from 17 metres to 25 metres in diameter and between 1.2 and 1.6 metres in height. And I was reading that uh, cremation urns were found in one during excavations in 1887, and they're now at the Dorchester Museum. This one in front of me, which is the sort of southern bowl, um, you can see it's got a hollow in the top, about a metre deep, and that's possibly because it might have been used as a military observation post in the Second World War, maybe a, a home guard lookout. And if I slowly pan to the right, the third bowl is um, just over there. Uh, they call them rain barrows. It's got nothing to do with rain, but it's an anglicised version of um, raven, <laughs> meaning raven in uh, Anglo-Saxon. And in uh, his books, Hardy referred to uh, this area of Heathland as Egdon Heath, and the rain barrows feature as locations in his 1878 novel, The Return of the Native, and I think his poem also, The, the Sheep Boy. But uh, my goodness, you certainly get some terrific views from up here. Um, yeah, and that's Dorchester over in the far distance and Hardy's Monument peeking out on top of the ridge. And if I uh, slowly pan round to the south. But, uh, quite breathtaking. Oh, I tell you, it's one of those days when we're going to have to keep well hydrated today. It's very, very humid and obviously quite warm as well, but uh, as long as we have the odd section in the shade and plenty of water, we should be okay. Well, we're now going to leave the rain barrows, continuing to head southwards, making our way off the heath. Looks like we've got a downhill section and, well, the views to my left, certainly, as we go downhill are gonna be quite amazing. Oh, just a sea of purple out there with the foxgloves. Seems to have been a really good year for them uh, this year. And uh, this is just panning back up to the ridge that we've just come down and the 
rain barrows are right at the top there. Looks like there's some memorial stones to people's dogs that have, uh, I expect, walked here in the past. Well, just a little update on the route <laughs> for those folk that might be doing this walk after seeing the video. We've come out of the woods. We're just about to cross a little road and continue heading southwards. Just a heads up, um, when you get to the edge of the woods, um, Finding the footpath that comes across this field wasn't straightforward. I accidentally carried on sort of parallel to the edge of the, uh, the wood going in the wrong direction. So uh, um, just something to watch out for. I'm well, just making my way past Norris Mill Farm. Now an 1891 map does in fact show a mill once being here, but interestingly enough, the river is some way to the south. Well, there's a, an impressive field of maize looking quite glorious in the sunshine. Still a long, long way to go before that's ready for harvesting, though. Well, we're continuing to head westwards, uh, making our way through a number of fields. Uh, a few of them have got sheep in, so obviously Logan has been on the lead. And there are a number of farms as well. Quite a few little settlements uh, along this section of the walk, all on the sort of northern side of the river with their land sort of stretching backwards. Well, we've now reached Lower Bockhampton. Oh, what a gorgeous cottage thatched, what's it called, bridge cottage. Ah, well, and that's because indeed it is by a bridge. And this is where we cross Lower Bockhampton Bridge. Uh, it's got uh, a number of those old signs on warning us of uh, what might happen to us if we injure the bridge. The river Froome looking quite beautiful today. It's 30 miles long and it rises at Evershot, which is about seven miles south of Yeovil and flows out to Wareham and then out to sea at Pool Harbour. I think it's our first sighting of the river today. Anyway, we're now going to continue our walk. We're going to be on the southern side of the river heading for Stinsford. Well, this is a beautiful section of the walk. Looks like we're back on the Hardy Way. And uh, oh, I, say, I say the path runs alongside the river and I've got butterflies everywhere. And uh, quite a variety of colors, quite a bit of white out there, but a lot of purple today as well. Oh, that's uh, just what the, uh, the doctor ordered. Perfect for cooling down on a day like today and fresh water as well. <laughs> that looks very, very relaxing. I don't think I've ever seen him that deep, so uh, it, must be, uh, it must be a warm day today. You gotta come out. <laughs> come on, fella, this way. <laughs> You're going the wrong way. <laughs> come on, fella. Logan, good boy. We'll have you swimming one day. <laughs>
and we've made it to the little village of Stinsford. The origin of the name, by the way, um, comes from Stint, which is Old English for limited area of pasture and ford. Although I've seen another source say it might mean um, ford visited by the sandpiper, which is a type of bird. Because it's also the fictional village of Melstock in Hardy's novels. But this is St Michael's Church. It's got a chancel, nave, north and south arcades, which date from the 13th century. I think it replaced an earlier church. The tower was added in the 14th century, the south aisle in the 15th century, and the north aisle in the 17th century. And the whole church was restored in 1868 when a vestry was added. And the, there were further restorations in 1883 and 1910. And there's a Saxon carving of St Michael in the tower wall from the original church on the site. Well, in the churchyard, there are these three sort of coffin-like uh, tombs or gravestones, all relating to the Hardy family. Now, Thomas Hardy died on the 11th of January 1928. He and indeed his family had wanted his body to be interred here at Stinsford in the same grave as his first wife, Emma. Indeed, his parents are, are buried here, but his executor insisted that his body should be placed in Westminster Abbey's Poet's Corner. So there was a compromise, and his heart is buried here, and his ashes are at Poet's Corner. So uh, I believe that there were two funerals on the same day, the 17th of January 1928, and I've seen a picture of the burial procession of his heart. In we go. The font on my right. There's some quite beautiful stained glass windows. The pulpit here. Now, this stained glass window here is the one um, in memory of Thomas Hardy and it was installed in 1930. And then through to the altar. And again, a much larger organ here on the left and then a oh, beautiful stained glass window above the altar. Oh, stunning church. Well, right next to the church is Stinsford House and parts date to the 17th century. It was part reconstructed in 1828 and apparently it was a school between 1963 and 1985 and it featured in Hardy's 1872 novel Under the Greenwood Tree. Well, just to the uh, east of Stinsford is Kingston Moorwood, and I'll tell you a bit about the house shortly, but there's an estate shop and also an animal park and gardens, which has got free entry and dogs are allowed on lead. So let's see if we can get some light refreshment. Well, we've just stopped for a little pit stop for a coffee, a pasty and an ice cream. We certainly needed it. <laughs> Well, I feel suitably refreshed after all of that. I say there's free parking and it's free to get in the animal park. And there's loads of things for kids to see. I mean, there's geese to look at and uh, I even saw a goat. And I think there's even a sort of walled garden and a, a woodland walk that you can go on. Anyway, we're now gonna make our way northwards uh, through the grounds of Kingston Moorwood and of course, that includes the impressive house, which is just by me here. Well, there's been a manor house in the village since the 14th century. It was replaced in the 16th century with a manor house, which is still in the grounds to the east of Kingston Moorwood House. I think it's now private residential. But uh, Kingston Moorwood House itself in front of me here was built between 1717 and 1720 with additions in the 19th century. The gardens were laid out and lakes and uh, I think it's something like 35 acres of gardens created around about 1910, 1922. There's now a huge agricultural college based here and it's a uh, whole estate covers something like 750 acres.
well, we're very much on the homeward leg now. We're leaving the grounds of Kingston Moorwood and heading, I suppose, northeasterly back to uh, well, the visitor centre at Hardy's Cottage and our car park. Aha, that's the sign I was looking for. Hardy's birthplace and visitor centre, half a mile in that direction over there. Just before we uh, drop back down to the car park, one final pit stop to take in the view of this uh, beautiful Dorset landscape. And uh, yeah, I can make out the Hardy Monument in the far distance where Logan and I have done a walk there. Of course, nothing to do with Thomas Hardy, the poet, a different Hardy altogether if you want to know more <laughs> check out the video and here we are back at the uh, the visitor center by the car park uh, take note that the uh, greenwood tree cafe is open between 10 and 3 and it's now quarter past three <laughs> well folks we've come to the end of our walk we thought we'd do the end scene here at stinsford churchyard right by where hardy's heart is buried the end of the hardy way we hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy.